Hello everyone, welcome to Finance by Vishan Arpita. In today's video, we'll understand balance sheet statement. So, coming to the first part, the balance sheet equation. While the PL statement gives us information about company's profitability, the balance sheet gives us information about the assets, liability, and shareholders' equity. The PL statement, as you understand, discuss the profitability for the financial year under consideration. Hence, it is good to say that the PL statement is standalone. However, the balance sheet is prepared on a flow basis, meaning it is it basically has financial information about the company right from the time it was incorporated. Thus, while the PNL talks about how the company performed in a particular financial year, the balance sheet on the other hand discusses how the company has evolved financially over the years. Um, have a look at the balance sheet of Amara Raj Limited Batteries. So as you can see, the balance sheet contains details about the asset, liability and equity. As you, uh, um, we had discussed in the previous video, asset, both tangible and intangible, are owned by the company. An asset is a resource controlled by the company and is ex uh, basically expected to have an economic value in the future. Typical example of assets include plant, machinery, cash, brand, patent, etc. Assets are of two types, current and non-current. We will discuss these in the later videos. Liability, on the other hand, represents the company's obligation. The company takes up the obligation because it believes these obligations will provide economic value in the long run liabilities in simple word is the loan that the company has taken and it is obliged to repay typical example of obligation include short term borrowing long, long term borrowing patent due uh, payment due etc liability are of two types namely current and non current we will discuss these kind of uh, liability in the later uh, later in this video in n uh, basically any typical balance sheet the company's total should always uh, be equal to total assets should always be equal to the total liabilities hence assets equal to liability the equation is called the balance sheet equation or the accounting equation in fact the equation depicted uh, depicts the balance sheet's key properties that is balance sheet show uh, should always be balanced in other word assets of the company should be equal to the liabilities of the company this is because everything that a company is o o owns asset has to be purchased from either the owner's capital or liability Owner's capital is the difference between asset and liability. This is called the shareholder's equity or the net worth representing this in the form of equation. So shareholder's equity equals to asset minus liability. Now a quick note on shareholder's fund. As we know the balance sheet has two main sections that is the asset and the liability. The liability as you know represents the obligation of the company. The shareholders fund which is integral to balance sheet liability side is highlighted in the snapshot here. So you can see the snapshot. Many people find this term a little confusing. On the other hand if you think about it we are discussing liabilities that represents the company's obligation. On the other hand, we'll discuss the shareholders fund which represent the shareholders wealth. This is quite counterintuitive, isn't it? How can liabilities and shareholders fund appear on the liability side of the balance sheet? 
after all the shareholders fund represents the fund uh, belonging to its shareholder which is the true sense of an asset and not really a liability to make sense of this you should change how you look at a company's financial statement think about the entire company as an individual whose sole job is to run its core operation and create wealth for its shareholder by thinking this way you are in fact separating the shareholder which also includes its promoter and the company with this new perspective now think about the financial statement you will appreciate the financial statement are a statement published by the company which is an entity of its own to communicate to the world about its financial well-being this is uh, this also means the shareholders fund do not belong to company as it is right fully belongs to the shareholder hence the companies from the company's perspective the shareholder fund are an obligation payable to the shareholder hence it is shown on the liability side of the balance sheet now coming to the third part the liability side of the balance sheet the liability side of the balance sheet details all the liability of the company without liabilities there are two subsection shareholders fund non um subsection uh, basically non current liability first is shareholders fund non current liability and current liability the first section of the shareholders fund you can see to understand share capital think about fictitious company issuing share for the first time uh think about fictional company issuing issues uh shares for the first time imagine company abc issues 1000 share with each share having a face value of rupees 10 each in this case the share capital would be 10 into 1000 that comes out to be 10000 that is face value that is 10 rupees and number of shares that are 1000 so it comes out to be 10000 in this case of arbl the share capital of rupees 17.081 crore as published in the balance sheet and the face value is rupees 1 i got the face value from the nsc website you can see here so um i can use the face value and the share capital value to calculate the number of shares outstanding we know share capital is equal to f- uh, face value into number of shares therefore number of shares is equal to share capital divided by face value hence in the case of arbl number of shares is 1708 and 10000 per share the next line item of the balance sheet side is the reserves and surplus reserves are usually money on marked by the company for specific purpose the surplus is whether where all the profit of the company reside the reserve and surplus of for arbl stand at rupees 1345. Six crores. The note and the surplus has an associated note. Number three. Ah, uh, let us look into the same. As you can notice from the note, the company has N marked fund across three kinds of reserves: capital reserve, security premium reserve, or account, and res. Ah, uh, general reserve. usually and marked for the capital reserve is usually and marked for long term projects clearly arbl does not have much amount here 
this amount belongs to the shareholders but cannot be distributed to them securities premium reserve per account this is where the premium over and above the share face value per value sits arbl has an rupees 31.18 crore under this reserve general reserve this is where all the companies accumulated basically um you can say this is where all the companies accumulated profit which is not yet distributed to the shareholder reside the company can use the money here as a buffer as you can see arbl has rupees 218.4 in general reserve the next section deals with the surplus as mentioned earlier surplus holds the profit surplus holds the profit and made during the year couple of interesting things to note as per the last year um considering 2014 as as the current year and 2013 as uh, the last year balance sheet the surplus was rupees 829.8 crores you can see here um this is what is stated on the opening line under a surplus see the image here you can see here the current year you can say two thousand fourteen profit of rupees three six seven point four crore is added to previous year closing balance of the surplus few things to take note here notice how the below line of PNL is interacting with the balance sheet this highlights a significant fact all three financial statements are closely related. notice how the previous year balance sheet number is added up to its years number this highlights what the balance sheet is prepared on flow basis adding the carrying forward number year on year previous year balance plus this year's profit adds up to rupees 1197.2 crore the company can choose to apportion this money for various purposes the first thing a company does is transfer some money from surplus to general reserve so that it will come handy for future value they have transferred close to rupees 36.7 crores for this purpose after transferring to general reserve they have distributed rupees 55.1 crore as dividend over which they have to pay rupees 9.3 crore as dividend distributed tax after making this um, necessary apportions the company has rupees 1095.9 crore as surplus as closing balance this is all this is as you can uh, you may have guessed will be the opening balance for the next year for the year 2015 considering 2014 as a current year surplus account so total reserves and surplus equals capital reserve plus security premium reserve plus general reserve and surplus for the year this stands to rupees 1345.6 crores for the year 2014 against 1042.7 crore for the year 2013 the total shareholders fund is a sum of share capital and reserves and surplus since this amount on the balance sheet liability side represents the money belonging to shareholder this is called the shareholders fund 
Now coming to the fourth part, non-current liabilities. So non-current liabilities represent the long-term obligation which the company intend to settle or pay off not within 35 days, 12 months of the balance sheet date. These obligations stay on the books for a few years. Non-current liabilities are generally settled after 12 months after the reporting period. So you can see a snapshot of Amara Limit, uh, Raj Battery Limited. The company has three types of non-current liabilities. Let us inspect each of them. So long-term borrowing associated with note number four in the first line item with the non-current liability. Long-term borrowing is one of the most important line item on the entire balance sheet as it is represent the amount of money that the company has borrowed from various sources. Long-term borrowing is also one of the key inputs while calculating some of the financial ratios. Subsequently, in this video, we we'll look into um, financial ratios. So let us uh, look at note associated with long term borrowing. So from the note it is quite clear that the long term borrowing is in the form of interest free sales tax deferment. To understand what interest free sales tax deferment really mean the company has explained the note below. I have highlighted the same in the red box it appears to be some tax incentive from the state government the company plans to settle this amount over a period of 14 years you will find that these are uh, there are many companies which do not have long-term borrowing debt while it is good to know that the company has no debt you will uh, you must also question why there is no debt it is because the company banks are refusing to lend to the company or is it because the company is not taking initiative to expand its business operation of course we will deal with the analysis of the balance sheet later in the uh, coming videos do recollect we look at finance cost as a line item which we looked at the PL statement. If the debt of the company is high, then the financial cost will also be high. The next line item, which uh, within the non current liability, is deferred tax liability. Deferred tax liability is basically a provision for the tax, future tax payment. The company foresee a situation where it may have to pay additional taxes in the future. Hence, they set aside some funds for this purpose. Why do you think the company would put itself in a situation where it has to pay more taxes for the current year at some time in future? This happens because of the difference in the way depreciation is treated as per the Companies Act and income tax we will not get into this aspect as we will digress from our objective of becoming users of financial statement but do remember deferred tax liability arises due to the treatment of depreciation the last line item within the non current liability is long term provisions And long-term provisions are usually money set aside for employee benefits such as gratuity, leave, encashment, provident fund, etc. Current liability are a company's obligation which are effective to be settled within 365 days less than one year. The term current is used to indicate that the obligation will be settled soon within a year going by that non-current clearly means obligation that extend beyond 365 days think about this way if you buy a mobile phone on emi 
via credit card you ob- uh, you obviously plan to repay your credit card company within a few months this is because your current liability however if you buy an apartment by seeing a see uh, seeing a 15 year o home loan from housing finance company it becomes non current liability as you can see the snapshot of arbl current liability as you can see there are four line items within the current uh, current liability the first item is the short term borrowing as the name suggests these are short term obligation of the company usually undertaken by company to meet day to day cash requirement also called working capital requirement so here is the extract of note 7 which details the short term borrowing meaning clearly as you can see the these are short term loans available from state bank of india and andhra bank towards meeting the working capital requirement it is interesting to note that short term borrowing is also kept at a low value as just rupees 3.8.3 crores the next line item is trade payable also called account payable at rupees 1277.7 crores these are obligation payable to vendors who supply to the company the vendors could be raw material supplier utility companies providing services stationery companies etc have a look at note 8 gives uh, which gives the detail the next line item says other current liabilities which stand out to be 215.6 crore usually other current liability or obligation associated with statutory requirement and obligation that not directly related to company's obligation you can see note 9 associated with other current liability the last line of current liability is the short term provision which stand out to 281.8 crore the short term requ- uh, provisions are quite similar to long term provision which deals with setting uh, aside funds for employee benefits such as gratuity leave and cashment provident fund interestingly the note associated with short term provisions and the long term provisions is the same have a look at this since note 6 is detailing both short and long term provision it runs into several pages hence for this reason i will not represent an extract on this those are curious to look into the same can refer annual report of amara raj limited for the year 2014 however from the use uh, user of financial statement perspective all you need to know is what these lines uh, line items deal with the employees and related benefit please note one should always look uh, as uh, at the perspective uh, associated note to run through the details we will now look through half of the balance sheet which is broadly classified as balance sheet uh, liability side let us relook at the balance sheet once again to get a perspective clearly total liability equals to shareholders fund plus non current liability plus current liability so total liability falls to be 2139.4 cars so key takeaways from this chapter are a balance sheet also called a statement of financial position is prepared on a flow basis that depicts the company's financial position at any given point in time 
it is statement which shows what the company owes assets and what the company owes liabilities a business will generally need a balance sheet which when it seeks investors applies to loan submit taxes etc the balance sheet equation is asset equals to liability plus shareholders equity liabilities are obligation or debts of a business from past transaction and share capital is number of shares and be multiplied by the face value reserves are the funds embarked for a specific purpose whether company intend to use it in future the surplus is where the profit of the company reside this is one of the point where the balance sheet and the pnl interact dividends are paid out of the surplus shareholder equity is equal to and we multiply it with um so now coming to the next point shareholder equity is shareholder capital plus reserve surplus equity is the claim of the owner of the asset of the company this represent the asset that remain after deducting the liability if you rearrange the balance sheet equation so equity is assets minus liability non current liability or the long term um liability are expected to be settled in not less than 365 days or 12 months of the balance sheet date date therefore tax liability arise due to discrepancies in the way of the depreciation is treated therefore tax liability are amount of income tax payable in future concerning taxable difference as per accounting books and tax books so current liability on the company is obligation to settle within 365 days 12 months of the balance sheet date in most cases long term short term liabilities are liabilities dealing with employee related matters and total liability is equal to shareholders fund plus non current liability plus current liability thus total liability represent the total amount of money the company is owes to other so this is all about the balance sheet statement so this is the part 1 we will come up with part 2 tomorrow thanks for watching bye bye